goes. First on Fox. A Charlotte child is fighting for his life after being hit by a police car. Some flight attendants say they're not being treated fairly in the wake of the airline bailout. And the war on terrorism could mean a new war on drugs. Charlotte's Fox 18 News at 10 starts now. Tonight, doctors and families are anxiously waiting to see if a child will recover from a car accident. I'm Kristen Hartman. And I'm Andy Dominiani. The boy was hit this afternoon by a police cruiser. It is an update on breaking news. We brought you first at Fox 18 at 6.30. First on Fox tonight, police are now investigating. But so far, it doesn't appear the officer did anything wrong. The accident happened late this afternoon on Tucker CG Road in Charlotte. The officer was responding to a non-emergency call when witnesses say a five-year-old boy darted out into the road between two parked cars. They say the officer simply didn't have enough time to stop. It was a non-emergency call, and uh, there is no indication at this time that speed was a factor. The boy was taken to Carolina's Medical Center, where he was listed in critical condition. The police officer will be put on administrative duty until the investigation is complete. Now to the latest events in Operation Enduring Freedom, America's War on Terror. President Bush says the U.S. is making progress in the fight against terrorism. He says authorities have blocked $6 million in bank accounts linked to terrorist activity and have frozen 50 accounts here and abroad. The Taliban says explicitly that Osama bin Laden is currently in Afghanistan and is being kept in a secret location. More than 100 members of Congress toured Ground Zero today, and President Bush will return there tomorrow for his second visit after the attack. And the president has approved a multi-million dollar relief package for Afghan refugees aimed at preventing unrest in Pakistan as thousands of refugees flee Afghanistan in anticipation of U.S. military action. Here at home, the Charlotte-Mecklenburg Police Department made it very clear tonight they won't tolerate racial profiling. In front of the Charlotte City Council, they put the policy in writing. The draft was designed to give officers clear guidance on when to intervene in someone's life. Since the terrorist attack on September 11th, racial profiling has taken on new meaning. St Chief Stevens says in many ways, police have to act like the FBI and they detain potential terrorists. It's about information, not race. All of that adds up. Uh, to information that gives them the ability to legally intervene in someone's life. And it's the same thing with a police officer. Beginning on January 1, police may be required to fill out forms after they detain or search a person. This will help police collect data on who was pulled over and why. The FBI wants hackers to stop their own personal cyber war on terrorism. Some call it an EHOD. Next week, a public service announcement aimed at the hackers will hit the airwaves saying they're actually hurting the internet and national anti-terrorism efforts. It also asks them to volunteer their computer expertise in other ways, such as protecting the internet from viruses. The federal government isn't leaving the information superhighway unprotected. President Bush is creating the Office of Cyberspace Security. He's also starting an office for combating terrorism. Meantime, planes could be flying in and out of Reagan and National Airport again very soon. President Bush is expected to make an announcement tomorrow that will authorize the reopening of the airport. It is the only commercial airport that never reopened after the terrorist attacks. The president's plan for Reagan National includes limited flights and new security measures. New information tonight about security here at Charlotte Douglas International. 24 armed National Guardsmen will be posted there beginning this weekend. They'll be guarding airport security checkpoints by Sunday or Monday of next week. It's part of Governor Easley's plan to boost traveler confidence by putting guardsmen at 12 North Carolina airports. Thousands of U.S. Airways employees are looking for work tonight, but many here in Charlotte are also looking for answers. Flight attendants who'd been on the job less than 210 days were abruptly fired in the wake of the terrorist attacks when they say it would have been better to be laid off. We want to be a part of this family again. We loved our job. You know, if we need to be furloughed, furloughed, that's not a problem. What is a problem for Debbie Brooks and for dozens of other former U.S. Airways flight attendants is being terminated. And that's what happened, they say, unfairly. We gave up and sacrificed so much for these jobs, relocated. Um, some fa people have families they left behind in their, in their home city just to come here to Charlotte. These picketers who showed up as a group at Charlotte Douglas today are probationary or junior flight attendants. They were called on immediately after the terrorist attacks to work when more senior flight attendants couldn't. 
but all this week they're finding out they've been fired we were there for them then why aren't they there for us now we talked to u.s airways corporate officials in washington dc they say the decision was made to terminate rather than furlough all non-union employees that includes our probationary flight attendants but that doesn't mean they won't ever be rehired according to the airline if the company recalls employees senior flight attendants who've been laid off would get top priority then probationary flight attendants could be rehired before the jobs ever opened up to the public still that would mean another six weeks of unpaid training for these probationaries and there's no telling when that might happen we have to reapply go through that process and then go through school again we worked really hard to do that one time and we, we just don't want to have to do it again no this is my life this is my career this is the company that i plan on retiring with and to be thrown out the door like this is just it's unacceptable well, some 11,000 U.S. Airways employees have been laid off or terminated since September 11th. 2,500 of those were flight attendants. Local probationary flight attendants say they have contacted the union to see what, if anything, can be done to help them. Still no word on when Skycaps will be allowed to check in travelers at the curb. The FAA reinstated curbside check-in Friday, but it's up to individual airlines to bring it back. Officials at Charlotte Douglas International say they don't know when that will happen. The Skycaps will have to go through additional training. Stocks on mild losses today. The Dow slipped about 11 points and the Nasdaq was down 18. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve will meet tomorrow concerning interest rates. Chairman Alan Greenspan might recommend another cut in rates to help stimulate the economy. But well, one thing that continues to sell well, survival gear. Americans are buying up items like gas masks to fight biological warfare. In many places, they're sold out on back order. Here in Charlotte, doctors say patients have also shown an increased interest in anthrax inoculations. The terrorist attacks might actually increase the supply of heroin in this country. Heroin is made from opium, one of Afghanistan's biggest crops. At one time, the Taliban reduced opium production, hoping for U.S. aid in return. But that was before September 11th. Now any cooperation is in doubt. A North Carolina namesake has left port, presumably, to help out in the efforts against bin Laden. The USS Kitty Hawk left port in Japan today, but no one can say exactly where it's heading. The Kitty Hawk is what's called a super carrier. It can hold 75 aircraft and about 5,500 people and generally patrols the Indian Ocean. Rows of RVs, as far as the eye can see, mean only one thing. It's race time again in Charlotte. Sure is. The UAW GM 500 is this weekend, but already race fans are arriving in droves. Many have followed the NASCAR circuit all summer long, and this is their second swing through Lowe's Motor Speedway. The race fans we talked to say they come to Concord early because the week before is half the fun. You know, go around, get to know a lot of people that come to the races, and uh, just pretty much having a good time and relaxing. And many of the thousands of people coming to this weekend's race will be staying at new hotels near the Speedway. At least three new hotels have opened since the last race in May. There are now as many as ten hotels near Lowe's Motor Speedway, and area hotel chains say their workers are prepared for the crowds to come. I expect it to be nonstop from morning to night. A lot of, a lot of people coming in, and uh, a lot of new people coming to there who haven't been this way before. One hotel's regular overnight rate of $79 will increase to $199 a night during race weekend. Major road work on Independence Boulevard is scheduled to begin very soon. Crews will add extra lanes between Eastway Drive and Albemarle Road. That will mean four lanes in both directions with no traffic signals, but it won't be finished until late 2004. And if you want to know how you'll be affected, there will be meetings held outlining the project tomorrow at 3 p.m. and at 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn on Independence. Good evening, I'm Fox 18 Chief Meteorologist Dennis Belk, and we're on a, still a great winning streak with the weather, with cool nights, mild days, blue sky, okay, a little bit of high cloudiness around, but, you know, who's concerned about it? The high clouds are still around, they're just hanging on the, the east side of Charlotte right now and over to Raleigh, then they swing on down to the eastern part of South Carolina, and guess what? They're thinning and moving on out, and they're not going to be a problem for our weather. If anything, they're probably going to allow the temperature to drop down quite a bit. It did that this morning. 42 degrees was the low. That's three short of the record set back in the 19th century. The high today was a delightful 75. 
Right now, Charlotte is one of the warmer readings in the uh, region. 61 degrees as of 10 o'clock. It's 51 in Asheville, 54 in Monroe. We do have some changes. It's going to be a roller coaster ride on temperatures, and rain is out there, too. And it's a new month. What's the month going to bring? We'll have all the details coming up in just a moment. Coming up on Fox 18. Michael Jordan explains his decision for a comeback. Later, terrorism is back in full force with car bomb attacks in the Middle East. Ahead are Krispy Kreme donuts getting smaller. The new equipment means big changes. And the Supreme Court says bye-bye to Bill Clinton. The news you need when you want it. This is Fox 18 News at 10. All good things must come to an end. I promise you, the minute Monica and I break up, I'm moving right back in with my next friend. Tomorrow at 6 on Fox 18. Now here's a look at some of the most widely held stocks. Watch is sponsored by Cameron Harris Insurance. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Imagine real deli style sandwiches from a fast food restaurant. Arby's Market Fresh Sandwiches. They'll change the way you think about fast food. interest-free financing on every new car and every new truck now through October 31st. Believe in the dream. Believe in each other. Keep America rolling. Spin City, weeknights at 11.30 on Fox 18. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Carolina native General Henry Shelton has officially stepped down from his post as the nation's top military commander. Today, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff marks the end of his 38-year military career with a retirement ceremony in Fort Myer, Virginia. Before saying a final goodbye to his troops, General Shelton made reference to the September 11th terrorist attack. Recent civil, evil, uh, evil and barbaric attacks have been made against the United States and the people of the free world. Our nation has responded with a similar call to all nations to join together in a combined campaign against international terrorism. Shelton is a native of Edgecombe County and former commander at Fort Bragg. Well, we all know Michael Jordan is coming back to basketball, but until today, no one really knew why. Today, he cleared up that mystery. The former five-time league MVP finally explained his comeback decision, saying his desire to play again was too strong to ignore and his need to step on the court again outweighs his fear of tarnishing his legacy. He also said he thinks his return to the NBA might help America cope with the recent tragedies. Um, I don't think uh, my job is more important than all the firemen and policemen's job each and every day. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm that backwards to believe that. But I think it is a place for relaxation, and I think that's what you know my responsibility is going to be. Hopefully I can provide a relaxation for for many of us so that it can help us deal with a lot of the, the social issues and some of the issues that we're dealing with. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you know, I know, I know my place, you know, and I understand that I can help, and this is my way of helping. And later in sports, Paul will have details on when and where Jordan starts practice again. Brightly decorated t-shirts illustrate a somber message at UNC Charlotte. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. 
The t-shirts were designed by victims and are part of a week of educational events at the school. It includes a self-defense workshop and a candlelight vigil. For more information, you can call 704-687-2375. Well, the donuts aren't any smaller, but the stores may soon be. Krispy Kreme Donuts is testing a new machine that will open up new markets in smaller towns. Company officials say the new machine is smaller than the current conveyor process. And that means you may soon be able to find those red-hot donut signs at malls, sports stadiums, or airports, maybe even convenient or grocery store. Hmm, how about that? Mm -hmm. Big change. <laughs> mm -hmm. While much of the world focuses on Afghanistan, tonight Fox Watch on the World turns to new violence in the disputed region of Kashmir between Pakistan and India. At least 13 people have died and many were wounded in a car bomb blast outside the state assembly building. No one has claimed responsibility in the attack, although Muslim rebels fighting Indian rule have hit the assembly in the past. And in Jerusalem, a large car bomb packed with bullets exploded in a residential area. No one was hurt, but it did set several nearby cars on fire. The explosion comes as Israel and the Palestinians try to enforce a ceasefire. The Supreme Court has turned down Terry Nichols' bid for a new trial. Nichols, of course, was convicted as a conspirator in the Oklahoma City bombing. He had argued that the FBI's failure to turn over thousands of pages of information in the case means he should get a new trial. The high court also banned Bill Clinton from practicing law before them, and he's got 40 days to say why the action shouldn't be permanent. Clinton was among 18 lawyers who got that discipline on the first day of the court's new term. The justices didn't say why Clinton was banned. Actress Sharon Stone is in the hospital in San Francisco suffering from severe headaches. She went to the emergency room Saturday. She's being treated for bleeding on the brain from a tiny aneurysm. Her treatment will be rest. Fox Watch on Your Health tonight begins with new rules for children when they ride their bikes. Today is the first day that kids under the age of 16 legally have to wear a helmet while they ride. If they don't, their parents could be punished. They'll be cited and fined up to $10. The new state law piggybacks a similar law already in effect in Mecklenburg County. A new treatment for Parkinson's disease is being highlighted in the recent issue of the New England Journal of Medicine. It's a pacemaker type device known as a deep brain stimulator. It works by giving out a stream of electric impulses, blocking the brain signals that cause symptoms. Some people in the Charlotte area are getting hope from the new device. I couldn't use the arm for anything. I couldn't use my hand or arm for anything. I couldn't do anything with it. But uh, now that he's giving back my use of my hand, I play golf, I write, and do about anything I want to do now. Now those who have Parkinson's disease have tremors, slowness of movement, rigidity, and other muscle problems. Still ahead on Fox 18 News at 10, brick by brick, two young boys are rebuilding or building their own symbol of American resolve. Imagine not having a home to call your own. This week's waiting child knows what it's like and it's why he wants to find a family. Tonight, we introduce you to Ronnie. Wendy's Restaurants presents Fox 18's Waiting Child. The 13-year-old behind the bumper car wheel wants to share his love for cars, fishing, and football with permanent parents. Ronnie wants a home. I've been in foster care since 94. I'm just ready for a family. I think the most important thing to him is permanence, is a family who's not going to give up on him, who's going to stick with him through the good times and the bad times. People who know Ronnie say anyone who adopts him will get back as much as they give. He loves to laugh. Um, great sense of humor. Also, he's, he's very outgoing. He's very affectionate. Um, he really likes to give attention. And she says he likes school. Um, he's a straight-A student. He does very well in school. Um, he knows that he needs somebody to help him every night with his homework, and he wants somebody who's going to be dedicated with him to help him through that. All right. He hit a 57. <laughs> Ronnie hopes to go to college and has an idea about what he wants to be when he grows up. I guess I'd like to be a firefighter. Why would you like to be a firefighter? Because I get to save lives. They're all goals he'd like to work for with a family's backing. To 
learn more about Ronnie or any other children available for adoption, you can go to our website at www.fox18wccb.com or call the Children's Home Society. That number is 1-800-862-1898. And good Monday evening. I'm Fox 18 Chief Meteorologist Dennis Falcon. We've turned the calendar, as we said earlier, from September to October, and the long-range computers have been hard at work trying to figure out what it's going to do. Well, it says it's going to be a normal month with normal temperature and normal rainfall. Okay, what's normal? In the temperature department, the average high starts out at 77 and drops to 67 by the end of the month, and the low temperature department, 57 at the beginning of the month, 46 by the end of the month. Yeah, it definitely cools down here in the Charlotte area. In the rainfall department, three and a third inches is pretty common. And yes, the rumors are true. It has been known to snow in the month of October, even in Charlotte. But just a trace has averaged out over the last 30 years. No sign of rain or snow or anything like that. But there is a little uh, sign of some fog. Early morning fog is possible with mostly clear skies otherwise. Low temperatures, still a chilly 46 degrees. But this should be the last chilly night for a couple of nights. Right now, beautifully clear skies out there. It's been a pleasant evening. Hope you had a chance to enjoy it. Our 10 o'clock temperature is sitting at 61 degrees. Trust me on that, it's 61 degrees. And the winds are practically calm, so we're set up for ideal conditions for some fog to form. Well, here's the weather map, and we have some high clouds around the, the area for today, and that was this little line of low pressure sneaking out of the mountains. There is the clouds moving quickly to the southeast, not enough to block the sun, si uh, sun at all, but just enough to notice up in the sky. Other than that, cool and dry air has been coming in from the north, keeping the dew point low and just darn nice weather. And it's all coming on the front end of this high pressure system. But now on the back end of the high, a lot warmer air is being transported to the north. Look at the highs tomorrow. 80s getting all the way up into the northern plains, even some 90s. And all this warm air is definitely moving on to the east. But the only way it's going to get here is for our winds to turn from the north to the west. And by golly, it's going to do that. Here's how. The high pressure back in the plains is going to move straight east. That forces the winds to turn more to the west. It'll come through the mountains, which will compress the air and heat it up. So our cool temperatures that we've been experiencing will begin warming up for a few days. So for tomorrow, lots of sun, warmer temperatures. High of about 80, and we haven't seen that in well over a week. Wind to be out of the west at 6 to 12 miles per hour. Looks like we'll inch up a degree or two over the next couple of days and then start cooling down and maybe some rain showers moving in for Friday, Saturday, and possibly a part of Sunday. After that, a sharp cold front comes through and we're going to nosedive early next week. So we'll keep you updated. In the meantime, you are now up to date with the latest on the weather. Fox 18 News at 10 continues. Two California boys have found a way to help the victims of the September 11th attacks by using one of America's favorite toys. They're building a kid-sized model of the Statue of Liberty out of Lego building blocks. They got sponsors for each of the 2,845 bricks they will use in the model. <laughs> <laughs> All the money raised will benefit the families of police officers and firefighters killed in the attack. A lot of work ahead of them. <laughs> they appear to be well on their way, though. That's a great idea, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> well, the Panthers did lose more than a game yesterday. You know, they also lost one of their top players. And what about the field? After the beating it took yesterday, can the Panthers get it ready in time for the New Orleans game? Follows next with Fox 18 Sports. Fox 18 Noticias a las 10 en Español, en programa de audio secundario, es patrocinado por la banderita Tortillas. Tortillas sabrosas, suavecitas, tortillas la banderita, en tostadas, tacos y enchiladas. Tortillas la banderita, deleite su paladar en todas sus comidas con... Tortillas la banderita. Y suavecitas. Tortillas, la banderita. Con calor de hogar.
surprised. There's never until a moment working here. I always had heard that Walmart was a good company to work for. Our number one goal is to keep our customers happy. That's 100% of your job. We laugh. We laugh at Walmart. We have fun. It's very important to make the customer happy because the customer is number one here at Walmart. Just go over there with a smile on your face and that may turn their day around. It's like a family. It's like a big, happy family. I love coming to work every day. How many people can say that? Walmart is a great place to work for anybody. Get free financing for 60 bucks on any 2001 vehicle on the lot. Or free financing for 36 bucks on any 2002. Now through October 8th, only from Harrelson Ford, 6500 Dump Boulevard. I husband a soft shirt. Beautiful. Is that platter hand-painted? Yeah, it's TJ Maxx, only $25. That's all? Yeah. I have to get back there. Don't tell me you got that at TJ Maxx. Oh, yeah, I got it for a steal. Oh, and Don's Gourmet Cookware, too. Oh, Don, you cook? The incredible fall home event going on now. TJ Maxx, you should go. Didn't you love going out with your parents for a French dip sandwich? No, you avoided going out with your parents. You were embarrassed by their matching sweatsuits. You must be thinking of Hardy's new French dip sandwich. Roast beef carved to order, covered with Swiss cheese on a freshly baked roll. Will those you for dipping? Might want to take mom and dad to the drive-thru. Try Hardy's new French dip sandwich. Or come by for breakfast and get two sausage and egg biscuits for just two bucks. Hardy's, the way food ought to be. Use an ordinary pain rub on your arthritis and everyone knows it. Use odor-free Asper Cream instead and get clinically proven fast-acting pain relief no one knows about but you. Aspen-free Asper Cream, fast pain relief no one knows about but you. You've got one busy day and zero time for menstrual pain. And that's why there's Pamprin. No other brand offers fast, long-lasting menstrual relief that's more complete. Now go ahead, take on your busy day with complete relief from Pamprin. Welcome back. I'm Paul Butler, Fox 18 Sports. All right, we all know how bad the Panthers field looked during yesterday's game with Green Bay. I mean, it was ridiculous, to say the least, the way that field came apart. So the question today for Panthers head coach George Seifert was, did the field have anything to do with linebacker Dan Morgan breaking a bone in his left leg? For that answer, here's Coach Seifert. Um, and, and talking to the other coaches and, our, and those uh, that have seen it in some ways, it may have helped them. Uh, by the ground giving, um, had it been a harder uh, surface, it, it may have caused a problem to his knee or even uh, a compound fracture. But that's uh, that, that was a sense in, in, in talking to doctors. That was a sense of what may have been the situation. Mm. All right, as for the turf and what can be done, Panthers Public Relations Director Charlie Dayton says history tells him the field can be ready in time for the New Orleans game coming up in two weeks. Late in the season, a number of teams have to reside uh, when they have bad weather late in the year and the field gets chewed up and then they'll uh, reside and be able to play so not only with uh, two weeks in between but with one week in between. Folks, let's hope that field is ready for the New Orleans Saints game on October the 4th. All right. Hey, I know it uh, seems awfully early to talk in the Hornets basketball, but folks, we've got to. Guys like Baron Davis, David Wesley, Jamal Mashburn, they're ready to hit the court, and they'll do it tomorrow morning for the first practice of training camp. Today, though, the Hornets talked with the media. It was media day. We put the question to them. Guys, what should we expect this new season? No matter how many years you play in the league, you always get a little bit nervous uh, with the start of camp. And uh, we should be pretty good this year. We're going to have a, most of the teams coming back and got some new faces and uh, look forward to it. Uh, with the addition of Derek Coleman coming back ready, you know, Lee Nalen with another season under his belt, I think we're going to be good. Our bench is really going to be well. We're going to have a really good bench. Hornets off their season October 31st. Also tomorrow, Michael Jordan starts his comeback at the Washington Wizards at first practice in Wilmington, North Carolina. Today, MJ said he can't believe how everybody's telling him that he shouldn't come back. Here's Michael. If I read every newspaper about the negative things that I was trying to do, I swear I wasn't I wouldn't living in America. America is supposed to be the free will to do whatever you choose or whatever you want to do. That's all I'm doing. I'm not committing a crime here. I'm just trying to play a game of basketball. <laughs> Mike just says, hey, I just want to hoop, folks. By the way, we will be there in Wilmington tomorrow, and I'll have reports for you at 6.30 and 10 right here on Fox 18. Hey, 
he's going to sell tickets. I mean, there's no oh, doubt about he's it. He's getting a lot. He's getting he a lot of guff from people. Black. By the way, tickets go on sale for the Hornets Wednesday, and of course that game with Mike was December the 26th. I know. Okay. I've marked my calendar. Yeah, everyone would be wanting to go to that. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Well, coming up, it was supposed to be good, clean fun, but somebody might have put in the fix on this unusual race. <laughs> Saturday, October 6th, it's a classic Charlotte showdown, the Little Trees 300. This race is always one of Lowe's Motor Speedway's most exciting events. Tickets start as low as $16 to see Bush Series drivers battle it out with Winston Cup races on their home track. Who will have the best strategy, the right setup, a little luck, and the heaviest foot to end up in victory lane? Great seats are still available to this classic Charlotte showdown. To reserve the best seats, call or go online today. The Little Trees 300, October 6th at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Don't miss it. Where would you think a sandwich like this would come from? A nice deli. Like a deli? Mm -hmm. From a deli down right around the corner here. This is an Arby's Market Fresh Sandwich. So good, you'll think it's from a deli. The trick is delicious. I like the dressing. You can tell it's from a deli. Not from a deli. Fast food. Yeah, right. It doesn't taste like fast food. Try one of Arby's Market Fresh Sandwiches. Arby's? Yeah! I thought they just did roast beef. Well, you thought wrong, mister. It'll change the way you think about fast food. Change my mind. Demetrius and Kenny are friends with something in common. Each of them is looking for an adoptive family that will give them a loving and nurturing home. If you'd be interested in adopting either of the teenagers, call Waiting Child, sponsored by Wendy's. At some place. An annual race of soccer team mascots in Britain is usually just good fun, but this year there's a controversy. More than 100 mascots took part in the race this week. <laughs> Big controversy. Well, a British racing newspaper claims that professional gamblers may have manipulated the event and helped the winner. The mascot known as Freddy the Fox came out on top, but there are suspicions that Freddy ran with kept the spiked shoes rather than conventional mascot footwear. What is conventional mascot footwear? I guess big paws. <laughs> now race officials are checking to see if Freddy won the race fair and square. Looks like he out Fox. Them. Well, no he look at look, look at them. Uh -huh. They're way behind him. <laughs> I know. He's got cleats oh, on. That guy's, oh my goodness! What happened to him? More of the mascots. <laughs> it's getting ugly, folks. Thanks for choosing Fox 18 is a 10. I'm Andy Dominiani. And I'm Kristen Hartman. Have a great night. Good night.